He's immovable movers. He's a law that never sleep nor slumber. No matter the case of men, he never tired. He never give up. He never change. He never change his words. Let's appreciate him. Let's exalt his holy name. Let's give him the glory. Let's worship him. Let's thank him for how he kept us since the last time we held the vigil up to today. Let's give him praises. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him all the adoration. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. My dear fellow brethren, if we didn't say we don't want to serve him, he will not use his stone in place of us in the name of Jesus, but he's looking for able souls, able men and women that will dedicate their life to say, God, I surrender, I'm ready for your leadership. I surrender, I'm ready for your direction. Pray that God make me one of your hand time reviver to transform my friend's life to transform my neighborhood lives to transform my communities to transform my nation my surrounding the cities around me open your mouth and pray that god help me O oh lord to be a good transformer in your hands that will transform lives of souls in your family, in your extended families, in your generation, in your generations to come, in another coming generations. Open your mouth and pray that God help me. more empowerment to do this end time work Lord give unto me look at our GS despite our age his age he keep going up and, up and down doing the work of evangelism visiting churches how many have we done some can complain you don't know that the devil is using that complaint to hinder them of the greater heights that God has destined them for. But when we leave our bodies aside and look unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, when we put aside all those weights, all those things that can easily beset us, putting them aside, as Romans has told us, and now looking unto him who is able to do all in all. Bible says, Cast all your cares unto him, for he cares for you. When you don't look at all those weariness, all those burdens, all those things that can easily beset you, when you're not looking unto them, he will take away all those problems. He will take away all those things that can that is challenging God's authority in your lives. Pray that God is this night with you. Touch me again. Visit me afresh. Open your mouth and pray. God, visit me afresh. Come, Holy Spirit, we need.
of the enemy against our gathering. That God authoritates my tongue to pray aright, to pray and touch heaven tonight in the name of Jesus. Blessed Redeemer, have your way. Lord, we worship you. Every power contrary to our gathering, Holy Ghost, fire, shatter them to pieces in the name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified. Lord, we saturate the environment with the fire of Holy Ghost. Cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Cover the building in the blood of Jesus. Angels of God, saturate this environment in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name. We give you glory because you are so good. Thank you because you never fail. Have your way, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. 
special clothes. We use this for religious ceremonies, like baptism. If we have a new convert that gave his life to Christ, as Jesus commanded us to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, water is useful for religious ceremonies. It's also useful for irrigating crops. It's used for energy, water mines. It's used for beauty, fountains. It's used for sewing, for showering, or for swimming. We're going to also look for the definition of a seed. We say watering the seed. Without water, seed will not germinate. Without seed, nothing to water. Praise the Lord. What is a seed? Flowering plants. It's a flowering plant unit of reproduction, capable of developing into another such plant. Also, seed is also a small object produced by plants. It's an ob also an object produced by human, from which a new plant can grow. Why did I use the word human? As human beings, we have been called to sow seed into the life of people. Seed that will grow eternity. It's also, seed is also the beginning of something which continues to develop or grow. When you sow a word of positive in the life of his soul, that person will never forget you. Even though you have forgotten what you have said, that person will never forget. There is an adage that said, someone who shits will forget that he has passed the shit. But the person who packed it will never forget what he has packed. So we are to sow positive things in the life of people that will grow. And when that person dies, that word you have sold into the life of the other fellow is what they be testified of what you have done. Seed is also a fertilized, matured ovum of a flowering plant. Seed is also a word of God in a given life. We are to sow a word of God in the life that God have brought across our ways, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our environment, in our community, in our societies, anywhere we find ourselves to sow the word of life into a given source that contain an embryo or a power of God. Those words are embryo. Just like a pregnant woman, though the baby, the embryo in the baby will be developing. When it got to a particular month, nine months, the woman will have the baby. The same words we sow into the life of a man, a woman, a boy, a girl will grow in the life of that person. The seed that is sustained that person or it bring depression or or downgrading in the life of the person. So what kind of words or seed are we sowing into the life of people? And as God has called us, we are to sow words that will germinate to eternity in the life of every soul. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Now, 
Peter ministered seed to the sower. Both ministered bread for your food and multiplied your seed so and increased the fruits of your righteousness. I will read it again. Now, he that ministered, we have called to minister life. child of God has been given the mandate to go and preach, not on the, until, uh, until you had the call. In as much you have given your life to Christ, you have been given the mountain to preach as a minister, to sow seed to the sower, both to minister bread for your food. And now we are not talking of physical bread. That after a while, it will spread. But to sow food, bread that will sustain the person till eternity. And that is why Jesus was selling us in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. That we have. The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded. That word that proceeded out of our mouth, God has called us to transform it in a positive way in the life of mankind, in the life of as many that will come across our way to minister that bread of life. To minister that great word of God that has been given to us freely. That word that was spoken to us before we get converted. And that word transformed. By the, for, the first time we had it, it's like, no, they are not talking to me. No, I cannot give my life to Christ. I want to enjoy the word. But when that word dies in us, then we transformed be fertilized by the power of God, then we see ourselves as a sinner, as someone who is not qualified for the kingdom of God. Then we see that for we to inherit it, we need that salvation. The same seed that was given to us, the same seed God is telling us, go and sow to the life of other mankind. And not just sowing it, but watering it. Watering it, multiplying it, the seed in their life. Multiplying that seed that will lead to eternity, that will sustain them, that will give them the spiritual and eternal backbone in times of trials. That will make them to stand strong that no, no matter the temptation, the challenges that is confronting you, the word of God is there to give you victory and triumphant. Giving it to them, the bread for your food. Multiplying your seed. Righteousness, the fruit of righteousness. Let's look at John chapter 6, verse 27. John chapter 6, verse 27. Say, Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him as God the Father sealed. Labor not for those things that will perish, for the meat that will perish, giving them the food that will lead to eternity, the food that will give them endurance in serving God, the food 
hope that we not allow them to succumb to any trials. But the food that will make them to keep trusting God, even when they were being facing with weapons that can destroy their physical body. But the seed that will make them to say, yes, even though the body is destroyed, my soul is going to heaven. It's going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's going to spend life and eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the seeds we are giving to our neighbor, to our children? What are those moral lifestyles we are giving to them that will sustain them even when they are gone? That will keep them in faith in the Lord? That no, I will not mingle my soul with the things or with their fears of the world. You have to multiply those words. Those seeds by word training on a daily basis with prayer. After we have won a seed, converted a soul to the Lord, we have to always go to the Lord daily with prayer on their behalf until their faith is rooted in the foundation of eternity. And also included is sometimes with fasting. When, you, when we win a soul, so a seed to the Lord, we are not to just leave it. Because when you sow a seed and you don't water that seed, it will die. Praise the Lord. But we are to daily watering it with prayer. Just like a farmer. Like today, now that it's rain, you will see the difference of that rain in the atmosphere. You will see how it's lighting the the, the temperature, the weather temperature, even the room temperature. There's a great impact in that rain. The same thing, you should have that great daily prayer impact in the life of the souls we are going to the Lord. Not to just win them that day and this day. Because they are still a baby. I mean, when a pregnant woman just had a baby, just get pregnant, if you do hard work, you have miscarriage. The same thing when we win a soul to the Lord and it's not being watered. There's no visitation, adequate visitation. Adequate following up with the word of God. There's tendency for such souls to go back to the world. But by daily prayer, committing that person in the hands of God, fasting on our behalf, on his behalf, we equip and strengthen his our faith in continuing with the Lord and total surrenderedness to God. When we still look at that first Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 of it, the later part of it, I said, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. We need to increase the fruit of our righteousness. Daily requesting God to increase the word of God, the word of righteousness in their hearts. When we sow the seed, we don't water the is God that brings increasement of the spiritual words we are sowing, but what of our own part of daily prayer, seeking God's face, that God keep this person, keep this person, let him or her not go back to the world. First Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 9. I have planted Apollo water, but God gave the increment. We have to sow the seed in, in, in unity with the church of God to sow the seed in great unity of evangelism. 
idealism and allow God to do the increase to bring them into the front yard of the Lord. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted and he that watered are one. But every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. We are one unified in the body of Christ to do the work of God together. It's not about who is doing the most of it in the church of God. It's not about who is contributing the most to build the church of God. It's not about through whom the members are coming. But it's not about me bringing them. But we are doing the work of God together. We are laboring together. But every man will receive his own reward. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husband. Ye are God's work together. We are to build that work together. We are to build the church of God together. We are to sow the seed and water it together. So individually in our process we have to do it. We are also coming together by not forsaking the assembling of the Lord. Moving the work of God together. Moving the work of God forward. In our thoughts, in our actions, and I pray the power to water the seed, not just abandoning it, the Lord will give to us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Let's pray. Bless the name of God for the world that has come forth. We have called to be a farmer for the Lord. To sow a good seed in the life of mankind. To go out there and preach the gospel of the Lord. No one is accepted. I was reading one of the memos today, and it might happen a little while, about an Egyptian Islamic man that gave his life to Christ. God died, Jesus died for the whole world. So we are not to discriminate who takes it or not, but we are to sow it. Let's pray that God, I need your direction. I need your direction to go to the right field in sowing the seed. I need your leadership. Peter had been toiling all night. But he couldn't catch any fish until he saw Jesus Christ anew, until he saw him afresh, until he saw him in a new way. Pray that God touch my eyes. I want to be seeing you in a new way. Touch my ear to hear from you so I know the path I take on a daily basis. I don't want to what I don't want to sow in vain. I don't want to fish in a fishless ocean. Lord, guide my path. Open your mouth and pray. See, God, I need your direction. Jesus told him, cast your net on this right side. He was like, that is the same thing I've been doing. Until he remembered that God breathed on that sea. Pray that God breathe on the work of my hands. Breathe on those seeds that have been sowing to you, physically, spiritually. Those have been feeding with the bread of food. I was telling a man, it's not just for you taking this food physically, you need the spiritual food. Come to the church of the Lord. 
this food will perish in your stomach within a few hours. But come and eat the one that will lead you to eternity. Pray that God guide me. Breathe on those seeds. Breathe on the bread I'm giving to man on a daily basis. Empower that word in my mouth. Sometimes we don't have to speak the whole grammar, but just that little word, when God breathes on it, it will transform the little hearer at that period. Pray that God transform your words in my mouth to fertilize in the life of the souls that will decree it to. That God will increase it in their hearts and they'll be able to remember and come, oh God, gathering together in this fellowship, to, in this church to fellowship with you, Lord. Pray that God, from this moment, I will not walk in vain. I will not toil in vain. I will not labor in vain. Lord, take my hands and use it for your glory. The Lord transformed the hands of Peter to throw away that net. Say, God, I need the living water to water those seeds you have given unto me. Not just ordinary water. Not just a common water, not just a natural water out there. I need living water. The Lord breathed on that sea, on that ocean, that Peter was able to cut a lot of fishes. To the extent that the net was even tearing because it was just too much. It was a great and surprise miracle. Pray that God on those on those seed have been sowing for you. Let that be great and surprise miracles on them. On those souls have been inviting to church, and they have not been yielding. Father, tonight touch them in a way they will never forget. In a way they will never, oh God, hesitate to take steps to take action. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I need that living water. That song says, Let that living water flow upon my soul. Let Every situation I've encountered in the life of every soul. Holy Spirit, take charge. I have no power of my own to draw them to you. Give me that living water. Transform my life to have that living water. When your own life is not transformed to have that living water, how can you impart lives? When the word of your mouth is not transformed, you will just be speaking like ordinary man, like ordinary person. When your word, when the word of the word of your mouth, the water in your mouth is not transformed, there will be no faith in the word you are saying. Pray that God transform the words of my mouth. Let there be a lively faith in it. When that word, when that word in your mouth is not transformed, then you will speak the word of carnality. 
And Bible says, can a minded person cannot receive anything from the Lord. Pray that God transform the words of my mouth. And what I need a living water upon my soul. I need a living water upon my life. It's what you have, you will give. It's what you have, you will impart it into lives. When you don't have that word that qualifies you to impart it, transforming souls, then you cannot give or offer anything. Pray that God tonight let my life receive transformable power. I don't just want to be a shadow. Lord, let the living water flow upon my soul. When your soul is not being regenerated, it doesn't make a difference between you and unbeliever. Pray that God regenerates my soul, regenerate my mind, retransform my mind, recircumcise my mind. When your mind is not being circumcised, you won't see yourself as the woman saw himself that he can also be a giver to Elijah, the prophet. That's why the fact that she has nothing. The little she had, she wanted to make it. Make corn bread out of it for her and her son to eat and die. We still have hope, even at the end of the little she had. She still believes something great can still come out. And that is why she honored the minister of God with words. And said, make my home first before your home. How many of us can do that? But when we see the when we see how the vision of God and see in a new way, we will know that there's nothing to hold on to. Even the little you have, you can give it out and let God transform it to yield multiple increments. Pray that God is there anything in me that needs to be dealt with. So I can lay everything on your altar so that you can take charge. Lord, take it. Selfishness, lack of love, will not let you to surrender to the altar of Christ. But when all those things is being taken away, you see that we brought nothing to this world and we will take nothing out of it. Pray, pray that God touch my life. From this moment, I want to sow seed of, of righteousness that will sustain every soul that will come across me to eternity. Pray that God, Lord, make me a living being. I don't want to be dead while I'm still alive. Some sometimes speak like, it, like the world in them is died because there's no power of life, power of God. Okay. Pray that God, I need the power of life. I need your power embedded in my life. So that anywhere I go, anywhere my feet steps, I will see myself as the sons of the Most High God. I will see myself as someone that Christ has indeed died for on the cross of Calvary. That I will be a great uniqueness to people around me. Imparted souls, imparted lives in people's lives.
pray that God help me to surrender to you. To surrender what you have given to me to you. Without holding on to anything. So that him, God, can multiply this. of God will flow through them. There will be, be more time in spending in the presence of God. There will be more time in seeking the face of God. The devil is making people busy, 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 busy for nothing. We have to work great. Means but after a bit, we still have to create time. I tell people if you can create time to eat, you have to create that time for God. If you can create time when you want to be, the, the, your bladder is so full and pressed, you cannot hold it. No matter how busy you are, you will look for a restroom, you will look for somewhere to excrete it out. After that busy schedule, you will look for a way to say, Yes, I have to use it. Pray that God give me the power that every day of my life it will be ringing in my mind that today I have not had a loan with you. Open your mouth and pray that God every day I want to be having a loan with you. Help our ministers to have a loan with you. Even if it is one hour in a day, when they started doing that, their lives will change. And that will bring the anointing even to the members. That the members' life too will catch the fire. And that's how it will spread to the world. Pray that, pray that God will need that revival. In our lives, in our churches, in our ministers' lives. In those in authority, our leaders, our regionals, our overseers, and the same revival in our children's life. the world into as many in the hospital now that the word of God will penetrate into them. Give them hope. I was telling a patient yesterday, I said, you know, there's nothing God cannot do. a motor fell on her and she had brain injury bloody but God still kept her alive I was telling her have hope in God they can still transform your system give hope of life to souls in Jesus name we pray in Jesus' name we pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless your name. We worship you. We exalt you because you are great and mighty God. Thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Thank you for the word, O oh God, you have shared to us this evening. We exalt your holy name in Jesus' name. Every soul that have heard this word that will still be hearing it, I pray, O oh God, it will have a real well of the spirit into their lives in the name of Jesus. And daily, oh God, you will renew those wells 
in their lives in the name of Jesus. You will renew those water, living water, in their lives in the name of Jesus. That God the power to surrender all unto you, O God. To know, to make themselves known that they have called as a minister, as a farmer, O God. To sow seed, O God, to be life out there in the name of Jesus Christ. Divine direction, O God, to know divine location of the, of the seed, of the harvest, of the farm, O Lord, you will give unto us in Jesus' name. Divine direction, O God, to know the right crops to plant to a particular ground, you will give to us in Jesus' name. Divine direction to know where to transform the, the, the net, O God. As you told to Peter, Holy Spirit, you will give us that divine direction in Jesus' name. You will open our eyes of understanding, O oh God, to see you as God who can do all things in Jesus' name. No matter any challenges, O oh God, any trials, O oh God, that God, you will give us the heart of understanding to know that God, you are the Walking miracle, God, in Jesus' name. Every dead faith here tonight, O God, receive the power of life in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray, O God, let the living water transform into our lives, O God, in the name of Jesus. Every dead hope, O God, receive transformable power from the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, let the, we receive the power to, to water every seed, O God, that you have given to us in the name of Jesus Christ. To work together, O God, as a co-laborer, even in your vineyard, in the name of Jesus. Only you that bring increasement. Poor soul, Apollo water, you alone can bring the increasement. Lord, I pray to all those we have been invited to your church, O God. Holy Spirit, you will water the world and you will increase, touch their hearts and increase them, in, increase them in our churches in Jesus' name. You will commit, you cause divine revival in our lives, in, our, in the body of Christ, in our leaders, in the name of Jesus Christ. That God, we have a daily alone with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, take charge of our lives, of our families, of our homes, of our churches, oh God, in Jesus' name. Take charge of this nation, of this community, of these cities, of this society, of this environment, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. As you proceed, continue with us in the name of Jesus. See, Lord, in prayers to the blood of Jesus, right? To the glory of your name. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. to be saying amen, please. God will help us in Jesus' name. to Sam chapter 2. I will uh, we'll just focus on some phrases from, from those verses. Amen. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people demanding of painting? The king of the earth set themselves and the ruler take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. He that 
that sit here in the heavens shall love. The Lord shall have them in derision. Now in this verse, we we'll see that a nation, the hidden, the enemies of God's people, what do they do? They gather themselves against who? The Lord and against his anointed. Now let's, in that is um, verse 2 there, it said the king of the eggs set themselves and the ruler take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Now that you can ask, who can battle with the Lord? Nobody, nobody can fight with the Lord. But we we'll see here that whenever anyone, any powers tries to fight with the Lord's anointed, what happened? He's fighting with the Lord. You see, they, they gathered against the, the anointed. But the Bible is telling us that first, it's not the it's not the it's anointed that they are fighting against. They are fighting against someone, which is God. And we know it is impossible for any power, for any demon, for any being, rulers, hiddens, to take to be able to over to fight God. It is not possible. So if they cannot fight God, they can never succeed against the lost anointed and I have good news for you today that you are the anointed of God and the Bible says that you are the ample of his eyes so therefore you are untouchable can somebody say amen say I am untouchable this it says let us break their bond that's verse 3 asunder and cast away they are called from us. I was say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And if you are a child of God, it doesn't matter the railing, the, the boasting of the, of the enemies. But I was say that you are the apple of, of the eye of God. You are hidden in Christ and Christ in God. And so therefore, you cannot be touched. Amen. Is it that he that seated in the heavens shall love? The Lord shall have them in derision. Now we see this. He see that God himself is seated in, in his throne. He is not even moved. He just looking at them. He said he shall love. What is he laughing for? About he's laughing at the foolishness of man. He's laughing at the foolishness of your enemy. He said, look at this one. They don't even know. They think they are fighting with, with, with my child. They think they are plotting against the church of Christ. He said, they are fighting against God. Saul, we can see the, the example from Saul. When he was kicking against the people of God, he thought he was kicking against them. But the Lord God says, so, so, why are you persecuting me? He said, ah, I'm, <laughs> I only saw uh, Mr. James. It was Mr. James I thought I was, um, I was persecuted. I thought it was Mr. B or Mrs. C. But God said, no, that person that you are seeing is hidden in me. And what happened? The Lord God visited him. That is what happened. The Bible says the Lord shall do what? He shall laugh at them. Let's look at Psalm 11 from verse 4. Psalm chapter 11. I read from verse 4. It said, The Lord is in his holy temple. Okay, I'll start from verse 3. So if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? It said, The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try 
the children of men. He seated on the throne. He watched. He tried everything. And as far as you are on the Lord's side, you will be victorious in Jesus' name. Now we'll go back to that verse 2. It says that he that seated in the heavens shall love. Man, we do laugh. I remember one time, this kind of laughter, the Bible is talking that God love. It's not like uh, maybe like jesting or, you know, he's laughing because this, the enemies here, they thought maybe they, he thought maybe they can be able to overcome God. And God will look at them and says, You are nothing but just a creature. I am still the Alpha and the Omega. And He will fight your battles in Jesus' name. Now we say, When God laughed at the wicked, does it mean that God is heartless? No. Or does it mean that God is cruel? No. I will say, He shall have them in derision. It doesn't mean that God is, is heartless. Neither does it mean that God is cruel. We should also know that the Bible says that God is a merciful God, but he's also a consuming fire. The same infinite greatness that mocks man's divine, man's open resistance and bold dis dis disobedience, it is that same infinite greatness of God that marks the sympathy of man in his lost condition. Even, even the Bible makes us to understand in um, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. You can see the two aspects of God. Ezekiel, if I dare read Ezekiel 33, verse 11. Amen. He said, turn from the wicked ways. But when the wicked, when they refuse to say, ah, no, uh, we, we will not, uh, we don't want to turn for our wicked ways. What happens? They end up in, in, in damnation, in destruction. We can also see in Ezekiel, I think Ezekiel 34 also tells us the two aspects, two areas, how the Lord God views Ezekiel 34 away from verse 6 to 7. My sheep water through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flocks were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after him. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the words of the, the Lord. Verse 7 As I live, said the Lord God, surely because a pre and my and my flock became meat to every beast of the field. Because there is no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherd felt themselves and feed not my flock. You see, if we follow, you will see that the Lord God, he cared for the, for the lost sheep. He's calling the wicked. He said, come. He said, he's a merciful God. That's why he's telling them to come. But he's also a, a consuming fire. He's the God of of judgment say come that you may escape the judgment 
But still, there is a rebellion. Still, there is an open resistance trying to lift up themselves above the knowledge of God. And when the wicked try to lift up themselves above the knowledge of God, they are brought low. They are brought down. And anything that will lift up himself above God's will and purpose for your life shall be brought down in Jesus' name. God's laughter gives us the assurance over evil. See, that when they laugh, God look at them and say they laugh and they have them in the ritual. Because we understand that when we are fidgeting, when we are saying, how am I going, going, going to do it? What is going on? This, this, this are like that. We man, we are scared, but God is saying, what is this? And God will have them in the in derision in Jesus' name. God's will for your life. Any resistance to God's will and purpose for your life is in vain. They shall be futile, they shall be brought low in Jesus' name. We can see Psalm chapter 11, verse 6. When God, when your enemies when the power of darkness, when they are railing, God laugh. God, God is just God will be, God is laughing at them. And when God laughs, something happens. When you look at the whole of the of, of the Bible, when God laughs, the enemies they are brought down. Psalm eleven verse six. He said, upon the wicked. Now read from verse um, 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelid try the children of men. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hated. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snail fire and brimstone and horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their call. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance dwells behold the upright. Amen. Now that's why what we're talking about the wicked. Those who have refused to to let you go, to let you to fulfill your divine purpose in, in life. Even sinners, God is calling them, calling everyone to, um, to repentance. Is that because judgment is coming. There's going to be fire and brimstone. He said, come to repentance before it is too late. And if they don't come to repentance, there is judgment at last. Amen. And the Lord God will give us the grace that none of us will escape the judgment in Jesus' name. It is the will of God that we live an excellent and a prosperous life in every aspect of our lives. That will live a sound spiritual, physical, health-wise, financially, but any distraction, every part that wants to deviate you, they shall be brought low in Jesus' name. Quickly before we pray, Psalm chapter 37, verse 12. Said the wicked plotted against the just and gnashed upon him with his teeth. That is verse 13. The wicked, they, they, they plot, they gather against the just and gnash it upon him with his teeth. What, what would the Lord do? The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his days is coming. So when no matter what you're going through, 
They said demons, witches, and wizards, whatever. You are a child of God. You will not fear because God is laughing. Was that problem you're passing through? Don't measure the problem with yourself because when you measure the problem with yourself, it will, it will overcome you. You will end up putting yourself in, the, in, 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 in a cage of sorry, of pity. But today, every pity in our life, God will take it out in Jesus' name. He will give us victory, celebration on every side. Amen. When God loves, when God loves. Psalm 59, verse 8. Say, but thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the hidden in the region. Because of the strength, I will wait upon thee. For God is my defense. God, would, he would defend us. He would protect us in Jesus' name. Finally, let's read Proverbs chapter 1. to four. He says, Because they have called, and ye refuse, they have stretched out my hands, and no man regarded. But ye have said, Have known all my counsel, and will mourn of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mourn when the fear coming. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. That is why believers, we should, when God is talking to us, when he's, list, when he's warning us, when he's telling us this is the way, this is what to, to do, we should always obey him and follow his, his, his instruction. Because when we live a just life, nothing shall by any means hurt us in Jesus' name. So we are going to pray. We are going to pray and say, Lord, every resistance to your will and pep in, in my life, let them be futile. Let them be in vain. Every, every plot of the enemy against my life, The Bible says, He that seated in the heaven shall laugh, he shall have them in derision. Enemies of your spiritual life, every power that wants to suck your strength, suck out your, your, your spiritual strength. They want to pollute your spirit. Every agent of plotting against the life, they shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. Walking against the church, the spiritual increment of the church, the financial increment, against our family, against, against our, our marriages, The Bible says God will laugh at them. He shall have them in derision. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, I will give, I will give this testimony and we will use it to pray. I remember a time a lady came to me while, while I was in Nigeria. She came and she, and she told me, she said, I took three pictures to a spiritualist. She said, those three pictures, he said, he said, the man told me, the man looked at, he said, he looked at, and those three pictures, my picture was there, and two other pe people's picture was, were, 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 were there. 
He said when he went back to the man, to the spiritualist, to get the um, information, the man was able to give him if information on those two. Then the man, then he asked him, what about the last person, which is me? Then the man said he did not see the picture, that everything disappeared. The anywhere they've taken your name to, wherever they have anything, anything that belongs to you, that they want to use as a point of contact against your life by fire, they shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. The Bible says, when you are with the Lord, you are, you are untouchable. It is a warfare prayer. Every point of contact. We'll see whether the enemy is going to have the contact. They will, the enemies, they will lose your address. We cannot be polluted. I remember, I remember somebody, somebody, somebody went to go and do a charm, and, and he slapped me. I didn't know. I was just in, innocent. I didn't know anything. I didn't know. He did, I didn't know he was using a charm. Nothing worked. Then he went and slapped somebody else, and the person started eating, eating, eating grass. What is the difference? Is the anointing, the power of God. No pollution, your spiritual God will give you fire in your bones. The God will build a hedge around you. Mouth is the just, He protects the just. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Father, we thank you because our battles are not ours. Our battles are yours. Father, we've seen your reaction to raise the plot of the enemies when they plan. Father, we pray that there will be no loophole for them to get to us in Jesus' name. That spiritually, may we be sound. Physically, may we be sound. In financially, may we be sound. Father, you said, oh God, we are the ample of your eyes. That when the rain against God's anointed, against the children of God, that you will just laugh at their stupidity and you will have them in derision. Father, anything that is rising himself against your will for the church, for our lives, we destroy them in Jesus' name. Father, we know that what the enemy takes years to plan, it doesn't take you up to a second to, to destroy it. But I so therefore every arrow strewn against our life, they are returned to the sender in Jesus' name. Every agent of pollution to pollute our spirits, to weaken our spirit. Father, we destroy them in Jesus' name. Fill us with fire. Fire in our bone. Fire in our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray.
some of us we remove our shoe just go through all those places is very very worth it it's very very worth and then the implication is that the rock will be uh, producing uh, what do we sparujara under it and then if we do it the way we do it by placing that rubber and that uh, bucket on top of the machine the water will not flow so that the water will just be staying inside the machine just within one or two minutes i put it down you can look at the water now you can look at how the water you see but look at since it has been no water there so that's when the water will just be stored inside the machine and we know what the implication will be so as a worker i want us to be very very vigilant in all those kind of things there's a sense of having ability to buy things there's another way of maintaining it and then almighty god is going to help us in jesus name. all those things are our responsibility uh, when you look at that rock i'm very very sorry uh, on saturday look at it you see that today is what Okay, so on Saturday it was on Saturday. Okay, okay, okay. God will help us. What I'm thinking is, if we are putting it like this, it will be feasible. When you look at the way I do, I do the holes, the water can stay, and then we can see all those kind of things. Very, very good for us as a worker to take note, and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. At the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we just go into the prayer. Then we will really call upon the name of the Lord for the finances of the church of the in the federal. Sometimes we are being careless, and then when we are being careless, careless about those things, we believe that as we are succeeding spiritually, uh, everything is okay. But the Bible let us know that the I want you to be prosper as your soul is prosper. So if there's an hindrance in our finances, that's me and the Bible said, I want you to be prosper as your soul is prosper. That means there's something in our soul that is hindering the surviving of our finances. Because the word of the Lord always balance. And Almighty God is going to help us in Jesus' name. And His grace is going to be upon us in Jesus' name. Apart from the individual, uh, somebody who owes money and do not pay is an entrance to our, our goods financially. We look for work we couldn't get is an entrance to our goods. The money that is coming in is not enough, it's an entrance to our goods. Uh, although the situation in the confession may open our eyes to the extent that when the arrow was, I'm not after it, but I'm after that, okay, uh, whatever they call the child of God must be financially okay. When the arrow calls on one church and they said they have given $20,000. Uh, I would say, oh, you are the type of the people who want me to be looking at an uh, example. Uh, I'm not so after the hit, but I want us to be looking at all aspects of things. And this will challenge us to be praying more to Almighty God that God balance my spiritual life with, uh, with financial life. Uh, many times I look at it that. Uh, is that the way it should be that nowadays we follow those people who bring money to the house of the Lord and those people who does not bring money but that one does not mean I look at it as I said to us the Bible said may you prosper as your soul is prosper and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ in all area of it we are going to be prosper in Jesus name it's a challenge which one needs to face 
and we are ready to face in Jesus' name. As a church, we have some finances to, to balance this challenge that this thing like me, I don't normally look at it and be fearful. But just because of all what happens, I, I will shake a little bit because everything is on my neck. But I know the grace of the Lord is sufficient and the mighty hand of the Lord is sufficient in Jesus' name. And God that brought us so far, we surely see all true in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Psalm, Psalm 99, 97, the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm 97, the book of Psalm, the book of Psalm 97, verse 10 to 12. Book of Psalm 97, verse, verse 10 to 12. You who love the law, it's evil. He preserved the soul of his saints. He delivered them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is soon for the righteous, a gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the law, you righteous. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Look at verse 11 for the word. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for his upright in life. We call upon the name of the Lord. All things that will give me joy, all things that will give my family joy, all things that will establish me in the land of the living, all things that will not let me. Just keep thinking. All things that will not let my head be keep upright. We are people are talking. I close my mouth. Not because of any other thing. Because my pocket is dry. Why people are donating? I couldn't do. Why people are bringing enough? I couldn't bring. We, we call upon the name of the Lord this evening. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, God changed my story. Change my story. Change, the, change my bank account. Change my pocket. Change everything concerning unto me this night. And let your glory shine upon me in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon the name of the Lord. Father, open way. Why there is no way, open way. Why there is a dry land, Father, wait it for me, O Lord. Let your glory be upon me. Let your mighty be upon me. Call upon him, call upon him, call upon him. Is that anything so difficult for him to do? No. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, the time has come. My financial situation, my account situation, my work situation from this to night, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, there must be changing it in Jesus' name. The first eleven to us. Light is shown for the righteous. I mean, for the righteous. From this particular time, from this particular hour, to your financial situation, to my financial situation, there shall be righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Call upon Him. 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 That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, just way is being opening all the darkness of your life. All the darkness of my life, all the all the road that is being blocked, all the way that is not open from this moment, from this particular by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, God is open the way in Jesus' name. Let us open our mouth. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. That your financial situation is being opened. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, everything that look odd, everything that look blocked from this moment, that changes in the name of Jesus Christ. Call 
call upon him call upon him was that thing that is too hard for him to do if so if the salvation of our of our life is not difficult the financial situation of our life cannot be difficult call upon him there should be a, there should be an upright light from above and the almighty god should open way all later there's a darkness in our financial in the financial of the church in the financial of in the financial area of our life call upon the name of the lord that god is opening it in the name of jesus christ and there's a new thing a new thing a new opportunity will be open unto all in the name of jesus christ let's pray specifically for individual for the confession that by the power and the blood of jesus christ god will open way in miraculous way we shall fulfill we shall fulfill the expectation of the headquarters the expectation of ourselves the expectation of individual by the power in the blood of jesus christ will not be i mean will not be blocked almighty god is not going to open the way miraculously we are going to pay our deal. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Almighty Father, I pray by the power of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray for the confession. Let's pray for the confession that is coming up in North Carolina. See, now there's nothing God can do. Many times I sit down, I look at it. I'm telling you as a, as a worker, as somebody that is consigned, I look at it like, okay, if, if this money, if we use it to pay our debt, it is something. But do not forget many times when we go there, it, it's not many times. Any time we go there is a blessing. We come back with blessing. Call upon the name of the Lord. More than enough. More than, more than what we need. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to open way for us in the name of Jesus Christ. There's a time we have more than $5,000 in the account. There's a time we have more than $3,000 in the account. Now we own one six thousand dollar. We own one 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 thousand dollar. We own another one thousand dollar. Almost eight thousand six hundred and something. Where is the money going to come from? And God depend upon you. God depend upon you. Upon my family. God depend upon your family. Call upon the name of the Lord that we will be faithful to Almighty God as a human being. Call upon the name of the Lord. Our tithe, our everything. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, all these things will not be a block hindrance to our to to our commitment. Will not be our will not be an hindrance. Will not be a blockage to our growth. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, "Bring all tight to the house of the Lord. Bring all tight to the house of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. That God will help us and God will even increase the tight. Because if we are faithful in the small things, surely in big things we are going to be faithful." Call upon the name of the Lord the, by the power and the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. God will help us. God will help all the family, all the family in the church to be faithful, to be committed, to be amen, to be committed and able to do more than enough for the house of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Pray for the church that all the debt will be pray, be paid, will be paid in a, in, a, in a miraculous way. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse, Psalm 119, 110, 119, Psalm 119, thank you. I sought you, oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your status. We call upon the name of the Lord. The word that teach how to plant, the word that teach how to reap. The war that teach how to be dedicated, committed to 
all area or to all aspect of arm of the church. From today, from this evening, Almighty God is going to teach us in Jesus' name. The Bible says, look at it. You know, there are some things that uh, all of us always count as a sin. Which is sin. And I've always been telling us in this way, there has always be balancing of the word of the Lord. Bring ye all your tithes into the house of the Lord, his commandment. That shall not do fornication, is a commandment. But if we see somebody that do fornication and does not bring his tithe or the offering, we prefer to stone that person that is not doing, I mean, that is doing fornication and forget the person that does not bring the tithe. And then if the tithe is not bring to the house of the Lord, if the offering is not bring to the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord will not go. Then how will those people who are there, if we do not go to confession, how we are going to go? How are we going to see a lot of things? How are we going to hear a lot of the word of the Lord? How are we going to see the changes that is coming in the house of the Lord? And then the effect is that, yes, we have said we are giving our life unto the Lord, but the other commitment that needs to be done, it is being not done. This includes all the families that is in the church. But we will call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will, we will hide the full obedience to the all commandment of the word of the Lord. We will hide it in our mind. Enough is enough of hypocrisy. Enough is enough of milk of God. Enough is enough of if I say this, I don't want the church to everybody to go, including me. Including me. But if God is open, opening our eyes to the passages of the Bible, we need to be open. We call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ from this moment, from this hour, from this particular time, all the word of the Lord that we are neglecting, all the word of the Lord that they, they are insignificant to us, all the word of the Lord that to us, it doesn't matter as far I'm giving my soul to the Lord. And the devil is using them to be an hindrance to our growth, to our development. We call upon the name of the Lord, Father, open my eyes to obey your word. Call upon the name of the Lord, open my eyes, open my heart, open every, open my hand. Open my hand, open everything, so that I will be able to calculate. I will be able to. I will be able to. I will be able. I will be able to see to my finances, to the finances of the church, to the finances of us of the Lord. That Almighty God is going to help you. Almighty God is going to help me. And by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, you know God will not come to our level except we go to His level. And then he doesn't understand that this is I, I am open or already he knows that we know the commandment of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord for all the family in the church. That from this moment, from this hour, we will be committed to the finances of the church. We will be committed to the finances of the soul. We will be committed to the finances of everything that belongs unto the church in the name of Jesus Christ. If we cannot do it by our power, we cannot do it by our, our knowledge, we cannot do it by our, our, our understanding. All what we need is to kneel down, keep praying, serious prayer about it, the Almighty God. This is my dream, this is my will, this is what I want. And this is what the, the word of the Lord says. With my family, which are individual, with my family, which my, with the, the three family in the church have not been doing. Father, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, I want you to change situation in the church. 
increase us financially, increase us as you are increasing us spiritually. Father, increase us financially in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. It's something that, you know, when we are talking about talking to the Lord, this is part of it. You talk to Almighty God, that God, I say, I want you to open way. Not because of me, not because of any other thing, but because of the house of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Let us call upon the name of the Lord. I dedicate everything. I dedicate it unto you. And I want you to be the first in my life. So everything that it belongs to me, I want it to be for call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord that Almighty God is going to do it in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient. The mighty hand of the Lord will be sufficient. The grace of the Lord will be sufficient for every one of us. Let's call upon him. Let's call upon him. The Bible says, your word I, 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 I eat in my heart that I might not sin against thee. All the all the all the word of the Lord that shall not that shall not fornicate that shall not do adultery that shall not murder that shall not do all of them are the word of the Lord. Bring forth the, your for the, the I mean the, the one over ten to the house of the Lord. It's commandment of the Lord. Do not let my house lack. It's the commandment of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. The firstborn. The first. I mean. The first thing, the firstborn, the first, the, the the first thing, bring it to the house of the Lord. It is part. It is part of the commandment. Call upon the name of the Lord. God will help all the three family. And then it, it, we have told us what nine over ten cannot do. One over ten cannot do it. One over ten cannot do it. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the, 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 all the family in the church, God will open our eyes to see our weakness. And God will open way. And as we are asking for forgiveness, by the power and the blood of Jesus, that Almighty God is going to forgive us. And by the power and the blood of a new door, a new thing will be open from henceforth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. I think I've shared the testimony of our house and my wife is here. I know I've shared it. I still want to share it for everyone of us today. When we are looking for the house, all our eye, all our dream is where we are going to be the church. We are ready to sacrifice any other thing for the basement we are going to be worshiping God. And then all the houses we are seeing, in fact, there was one government said going to give us 23,000 or more than that. If I'm not mistaken, as a free money to support us. But because of our aim, because of our dream, God knows there is something that is still better somewhere. And that's why when we wanted to buy this house, a lot of commitment, a lot of problem we encounter in the all other one we didn't encounter in this, in this at all. Because we have decided we are looking for a house, we are going to be serving God. And God has our prayer. That's part of the commitment. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, for everything we surrender all. We surrender all. No matter how big it is, no matter how it is, as from this moment, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we surrender all to Jesus, we surrender all in the name of Jesus Christ. From henceforth, church will not lack again in the name of Jesus Christ. Church will open way, church will pay all those people who owe us, all those people that we owe, all those people that look that is that is close. As a result of our commitment tonight, God will open way in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power and the blood of Jesus, our finances, the finances of the church is going to be changed for henceforth in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. The grace, of God. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.